Good morning and a very warm welcome to Bally Ward Church on this Sunday, the 14th of March, the fourth Sunday in Lent. Um, welcome to our parishioners of Bally Ward and Rathfryland and others perhaps from further afield um, who are joining with us this morning. We're so glad of your company and we trust today will be a blessing as we worship together. It's Mothering Sunday or Mother's Day as it's often known. And uh, I hope all the mums who are tuning in this morning, I hope that already you've been spoiled. Maybe there's been some, some nice gifts brought to you along with breakfast in bed this morning. Hopefully you're not having to do too much cooking today, if that's your usual Sunday routine. Although this year, unfortunately, we can't really go out to restaurants the way um, some might enjoy doing on Mother's Day. Uh, but whatever you're up to, we trust it's a really special and enjoyable day for you. And uh, most importantly, um, to any of the boys and girls who are watching, what your mum would love most of all today is just a big hug uh, and a, a thank you to her for, for all that she does for you. Because mums are great and we're very, very thankful for them. Of course, for, for others, um, today is maybe a day with, with mixed emotions. Um, perhaps for some of us, um, alongside the joy of rejoicing in, in motherhood, there, there can also be sorrow. And, and we know that, especially for someone who has lost their own mother, or perhaps hasn't known their mother, or, or indeed perhaps has lost a child, or, or knows estrangement within our families. All of those things are real. Uh, and they can be painful for us. And, and a day like this can, can perhaps just uh, make that pain all, all the more acute in our lives. But in this service, as, as we come to worship today, we remember that, that God's love is unchanging. And the Bible says this in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And by faith, by the work of Jesus, God the Father has adopted us as his children into his family. And there's room in his family and in his heart of love for each and every one of us. So let's keep that in mind as we come to worship. We're, we're worshipping the God who loves us, the God who cares deeply for us. And we can bring our hearts, the joys and the sorrows, to him and he meets us where we are uh, and lifts us, lifts our hearts and our minds uh, to him uh, and to his glory. So as we prepare to begin to worship, our, our responsive phrase, which will pepper throughout our service this morning. Praise God who loves us. Praise God who cares. We're going to sing together our opening hymn, Because He Lives. Thank you. 
morning we come before God and in a moment of quiet we bring before him the brokenness of our world and of our own lives. Let us call to mind our sin, our failure to value the love of others and our failure to love as Christ loved us. We pause for a moment of self-examination. Father God, your love gives us life from the moment of conception, yet so often we fail to live as your children. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Loving Jesus, you embody goodness and call us to do good, yet so often we seek first our own good. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you hear us when we cry for help, yet so often we ignore the cries of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore in you his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise God who loves us. Praise God who cares. Let's join in saying the Mothering Sunday Collect. God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's time for our Bible passage, and I'm delighted that Teresa Cochran is our reader this morning. Hand over now to her. This is a reading from Mark chapter 1, verses 29 to 34. Jesus heals many. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, 
The people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak, because they knew who he was. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Teresa, and we hope you have a very happy Mother's Day. Just some announcements to keep you up to date with some of the things that are happening in the life of the church and beyond. And um, Don't forget that our bishop, Bishop David, is continuing with his daily series of Lenten devotions on the book of Nehemiah. And you can follow those either on our diocesan Facebook page or we link them each day onto our own Facebook pages. Uh, the video usually lasts five, six, seven minutes uh, as Bishop David unpacks another section of the book of Nehemiah. So keep tuned into those and we trust that they're a blessing. Our select vestries in both parishes have meetings coming up in the near future. Uh, for Bally Ward Select Vestry, we're meeting tomorrow, Monday evening, uh, via Zoom at 8 o'clock. And then for Rathfryland Vestry, that will be on Wednesday week, the 24th of March, again at 8 o'clock via Zoom. And we'll be using the same access contact details on Zoom. If any vestry members need them, please just contact myself or the secretary for the parish and we'll get those to you. On Tuesday evening of this week, um, CEF, that's Child Evangelism Fellowship, invite us to join with them online for a Pray for Rathfryland's Children event. Uh, usually we would meet in person for this at this time of year each year, um, but obviously that's not possible. So like so much else that has moved online, we're meeting via Zoom. And if you'd like to be part of that evening to pray for the children and the young people of Rathfryland, um, you should have the Zoom details um, if you're a Rathfryland parishioner, they came in the letter uh, delivered over the weekend. If you're a Bally Ward parishioner, just contact me and we'll gladly get those to you. Tuesday evening at 8 for the CEF prayer meeting. Uh, and because of that, uh, we won't have our own midweek fellowship this week. Uh, and I'd encourage you, if you usually come, to, to transfer and to go along to the CEF meeting if you're able to. Wednesday, of course, is St. Patrick's Day. Um, and there are a couple of special events taking place. Uh, there's an online service from Down Cathedral at 12 noon. And if you go to the Down Cathedral website, you'll be able to follow their live webcam link and be part of that service. And also for any children, we have a St. Patrick's Day Muddy Prayer Trail, which our diocese has put together. And if you go on to the diocesan website, that's downandremore.org forward slash news, You'll find the muddy trail for St. Patrick's Day there, and hopefully you'll have some fun with that. Now, an important one. Next Sunday, the 21st of March, it's our all-age family service, uh, but we're going to do something a little bit different. Rather than have the services at 10.30 and 12, as we usually do, we're going to combine and all have our service together at 11.15. So 11.15 will be when the service goes online next Sunday morning. And then at the end of the service, at around about 12 o'clock, we're, we're going to encourage you to come to our Zoop lunch. Now Zoop, you might think, what's a Zoop lunch? Well, a Zoop lunch is simply a soup lunch on Zoom. And uh, we'd love you to come and be part of that. Uh, after the service is finished, why not go and grab a bowl of soup and um, then gather around your, your computer screen or your tablet um, and, and go on to our Zoom, our usual connection on Zoom, and that we can, we can all simply join in, enjoy seeing each other's faces, uh, finding out what sorts of soup everybody else likes. Um, and we're also going to be joined for, for just a few minutes um, by a representative from Prison Fellowship Northern Ireland. And uh, he's going to share with us a little bit about the work that Prison Fellowship have been doing, especially during the pandemic. Uh, and there's also an opportunity, if you wish, um, to support that particular ministry um, financially. And we'll give you the link for how to do that as well. But first and foremost, we want you to come and enjoy your soup lunch and your, your bowl of soup with each other. That's, that's the, the key thing. Uh, and we'd love to have your company. So look out for that next Sunday. Um, Holy Week begins on Monday the 29th of March. 
We'll have special services each evening from Monday through to Good Friday at 8 o'clock online. Things aren't quite clear yet for Easter Sunday um, as to whether we're going to be able to meet in person or not. Um, but we'll keep you up to date over these coming weeks whenever things become a little bit clearer for us. Thank you very much indeed. We're going to sing together again. And uh, this next song of praise is it's a more contemporary song. And it speaks to us of the beauty and the power and the wonder of the name of Jesus. So we sing together, You Were the Word at the Beginning. us. Praise God who cares. Father, as we bow in your presence, may your word be our rule, may your spirit be our teacher and our guide, 
and may your glory be our chief concern. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It was way back in January when I was planning our little series of sermons for this term. And as I was thinking about today and Mothering Sunday coming up, I was wondering what passage could we look at that that continues our little theme of looking at the life of Simon Peter through the Gospels, but also ties in in some way with Mothering Sunday. And the passage that came to mind was the one that Teresa read for us a little bit earlier. There's no reference in Scripture to Peter's mother. However, we are told in the Gospels that Peter's life was enriched by that most precious gift of a mother-in-law. Yes, Peter was blessed indeed. Now, I was tempted to begin the sermon with a mother-in-law joke today, but when I went, on, when I went online and, and looked them up, they were all so mean that I thought I would only be opening a can of worms and I'd get into trouble with my own mother-in-law if I told any jokes. They do tend to get a bit of a bad press, don't they, mothers-in-law? And certainly we know that in some families, it, that can be a, a, a thing that really is tough. Relationships with the in-laws can sometimes be strained, and that can be no laughing matter in some cases. I would have to say, though, in all seriousness, that my experience has been the very opposite of that. Uh, for me, both of my own parents died when they were in their 50s, so they were both quite young. And I would have to say that uh, my parents-in-law, George and Myrtle, have been certainly very much of God's provision to me um, over the years because they, they have treated me very much like they would their own sons. And I am so grateful for that. I know they listen in as well, so I hope they're listening today. Uh, but many of us will know what that's like. Many of us will have someone in our lives who, per- perhaps not a blood relative to us, but they've been like a mother or a father to us. They, they've shown us that, that care and concern and commitment that a parent so often has. And so today is a day to be thankful, n- not just for our own mothers, but for all of God's goodness, for all the people that he brings into our lives who reflect his heart of love through their words and their deeds towards us. And I would imagine that that for all of us, there's at least one person whom we can be glad of and thankful for on a day like today. But back to Peter and his mother-in-law. Well, the very fact that Peter had a mother-in-law tells us that, that Peter must have been married That's maybe not something that we think of very often because uh, usually the scriptures talk about Peter and his wife is never named. She's not even mentioned here in Mark chapter 1 where we are this morning. However, in another verse of scripture, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 5, if you look up that verse, it, it seems to suggest to us there that Peter's wife was alive and well. Not only that, but it's quite possible that she accompanied him on some of his post-resurrection missionary journeys. So although it's Peter's name which is mentioned so often in scriptures, we can be confident that Peter had the support of a loving wife, not behind him, but alongside him, uh, that they were a, a couple who strengthened one another and drew strength from the Lord. Their ministry, as is so often the case, was not an individual, was not a solo effort. It was a team effort. Uh, And God seems to have used them as a couple to be a blessing to others. It's worth remembering on a day like today that families are God's idea. Of course, not all of us live in a family. Uh, Some of us may well live alone, but most of us know what it is to have grown up in a family. And hopefully, for most of us, we're glad of our families. Uh, there's, There's more to be thankful for than perhaps that concerns us. Again, I realize that that's not always the case. But we can be sure that that God's heart is for families. 
and he wants families to flourish. Now it's important also to say that that God does not intend each little family unit to be an independent, exclusive, self-sufficient little kingdom in its own right. It's not like that. God's Part of God's reason for, for creating families is that, that they can be a blessing beyond themselves, that families can be a place of welcome to the outsider. Psalm 68 and verse 6 says this, God sets the lonely in families. God's intention is that within our families, there should be space for others. And that might express itself in lots of different ways. It might be through hospitality. It's been so hard, hasn't it, that during this pandemic, we haven't been able to have folks round to our houses for a cup of coffee or for a meal, or, or to play a game together, or whatever it might be. And that's been tough. Hospitality is a key part of family life, welcoming others in. We have friends who foster. Again, a, another way of opening their home to, to someone beyond themselves. Uh, and they invite um, a, a girl to come in and And it's a a period of respite each month for her and for her own family. Uh, And that's a way that family life is used to be a blessing beyond themselves. Of course, families don't always work the way that they should. Uh, And sometimes great sadness and, and great hurt can emerge from family life. And God knows that. Um, God is not naive about families and the problems that families face. So it's important on this Mothering Sunday to remember, as we did at the start of our service, that God cares deeply for each and every one. His heart is a heart of love. He is our loving Heavenly Father. And so we can be sure that whatever our earthly experience of families might be, that there is room for us in God's family. And indeed that he invites us to be adopted into his family by grace through faith in his son Jesus. But what about Peter's family? What what do we learn about them from Mark chapter 1 in these few short verses that we read today? Let, Let me read to you again from verse 29. As soon as Jesus left the meeting place with James and John... They went home with Simon and Andrew. When they got there, Jesus was told that Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with fever. Jesus went to her. He took hold of her hand and helped her up. The fever left her and she served them a meal. I want to draw out just very briefly uh, and very succinctly just four things that we see about Peter's home. in in this passage four things that perhaps uh, we might seek to be part of our own home and family experience also firstly we see that peter's home was a place of healing it was a place of healing most of us understand just how great an impact that sickness in a home can have we've seen that all too much through this pandemic haven't we loved ones isolating within their own homes in many cases we haven't been able to even be with family members who are ill and we know that sickness in a home puts everyone out of routine it affects us mentally and emotionally as it does physically now these verses in mark 1 they suggest to us that simon peter's mother-in-law either lived with Peter and his family, or or certainly lived very close by them uh, because Jesus was able to go to her, um, it seems, in a very short period of time. And he goes for a particular reason. She is ill with a fever and she's in need of care. And what we see in this passage is that for Peter's mother-in-law, her healing comes in a miraculous way. We're told that that Jesus simply took her hand firmly and helped her to her feet. 
And in that moment, she instantly regained her strength and her fever disappeared. It must have been a a marvellous incident to see. I'm sure that all of that family were, were bowled over by the power of Jesus' simple touch that he simply took this woman's hand and she was raised to fullness of health. You know, we could say, couldn't we, that that in that moment, there was a little foretaste given to Peter's family of the very nature of God's heart and his kingdom. God's kingdom is a kingdom of healing and wholeness. Let's not forget that, that when his kingdom fully comes, in the final reckoning, there will be no more sickness, no more death, No more tears of sorrow. No more anxiety. Those things will one day be in the past. Because our God is a God of wholeness. He sets people free. Free from the power of illness. And yet, although in our homes we might not experience a miraculous kind of healing. We know so much, don't we, that that we are called for our homes to be a place of healing. Often it's mums who are very involved in that. Holding a child tight when they're upset. Getting the the sticky plasters and the cowpaw. Phoning the doctor's surgery. Whatever else might be required. It's not just mums who do that. But often they have a big part to play in that. There is great healing potential within a home, isn't there? Because of the love and the concern that we show for one another. And thanks be to God for for the wonderful medicine that we enjoy in our generation and for all who work in, in hospitals and healthcare settings to bring healing to us. We have much to be thankful for. Is your home a place of healing? Is, is it a place where those who are there can, can be restored because they know that when they are down that someone else will be there, there to help, there to lift them up, there to speed them towards better health. We trust and pray. Peter's home was a place of healing and that's one of the blessings of home life. Secondly, we see here that that this home was a place of service. It was a place of service. One of the remarkable things about this little healing incident is that as soon as Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law, she's up on her feet. Uh, She can't wait to get to work. And we're told that she served them a meal. I'm struck by how complete her healing must have been there was no need for a period of recuperation jesus restoration was full it was whole and he brought this lady to a stage where where straight away she was able to be running around and looking after others clearly she had that that heart of service she she loved to serve and serving others is just one of the ways that we can show our thanks for all that God has done for us. Jesus, of course, is often described as the servant king. He was the one who, uh, on the first Maundy Thursday, got down on his knees like a slave and washed the feet of his disciples. And we know that Peter struggled with that particular episode too. Jesus has a servant heart. He came not to be served, but to serve. And this family gives us a beautiful picture of the joy that comes from serving. I I would dare to imagine that that Peter's mother-in-law, that it put a smile on her face whenever she was able to extend that, that gift of serving a meal to those around her. She was glad to see them uh, happy and that in itself made her content. I wonder, do you try to serve within your home and your family? It, It can be very easy to slip into a pattern where we take others for granted and we let them do all the work. 
don't let Mother's Day be the only day whenever we think I could lend a hand, I could do this or that. We're called to serve each and every day in our homes and indeed in the life of the church. We're called not to leave it all to the work of a few, but to play our part, uh, to let Jesus take our hands and let them work for him. This home was a place of service. Thirdly, we see that this home was a place of welcome. It was a place of welcome. I wonder uh, if I read the second part of our passage, uh, how would you see that at work? Verse 32 of Mark chapter 1. That evening after sunset, all who were sick or had demons in them were brought to Jesus. In fact, the whole town gathered around the door of the house. Jesus healed all kinds of terrible diseases and forced out many demons. It seems that that very evening, after the healing within the home, there was an awful lot of activity and a lot of healing that took place around the home. Simon Peter's house got very busy that evening. In fact, we're told that the whole town gathered at his door to, to, so that they could meet with Jesus. We don't have to have a, a large house or a fancy house in order to welcome others. I, I suspect Peter being a fisherman that his residence was not particularly exceptional but nonetheless their home was a place of welcome that evening. Jesus welcomed others and, and Peter and his family facilitated that at their house. Romans chapter 12 and verse 13 says that we should always be eager to practice hospitality. Is your home a place of welcome? Do you extend an invitation to others? There can be something very special, can't there, about being invited into someone else's home. And again, as I said earlier, the pandemic has scuppered that in many ways. But please God, the day will come again soon when we'll be able to invite others into our homes and to use them as a blessing one to another. Our homes are to be a place of welcome. And maybe don't forget our, our Zoop lunch next Sunday in one sense will be an opportunity for us to invite one another into our homes in a virtual way uh, as we aren't able to share literally together, uh, but we can at least enjoy the company of each other's homes in an online sense. Lastly, and crucially, Peter's home was a place where Jesus was invited. You see, all the good things that happen in this passage happened because Jesus was welcomed into the home. And I wonder, is, is Jesus someone who is welcome in your home? Is your home peppered with prayer? Do you know the presence of the risen Jesus as you wake in the morning, as you, you spend the day in the house. And, and boy, we've been spending a lot more time, many of us at home, than ever before. Is Jesus welcome in your home? It, it, the way that you act and speak in your home, would they show that, that Jesus is welcome? We know, don't we, that, that, that Jesus never breaks down the door of our houses. But he stands and knocks and he waits for us to open the door and to invite him in. And what we see in this passage is that when Jesus is invited into our homes, that good things come. That knowing his presence within and around us brings hope, brings healing, brings a knowledge of love like no one else before. This home was a place of healing. This home was a place of service. This home was a place of welcome. This home was a place where Jesus was invited. May these things be true in your home and in mine.
on this Mother's Day and always. Amen. We're going to respond in faith as we say together the Apostles' Creed. So let us declare our faith in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Praise God who loves us. Praise God who cares. Today is a day which we often associate with the giving and receiving of flowers. And we know that flowers often are, are a good way to express a particular sentiment, be it love or regret or joy or sorrow. So today in our prayers, we're going to use images of a number of different flowers each with its own particular association to help to shape our prayers today. So let us pray. The first flower we see is a pink carnation, which often has two meanings. Firstly, it symbolises the power of a mother's undying love. And secondly, it is often given as a sign of gratitude. So today... We thank you, Lord, for all mothers who have loved and laughed and laboured as they care for their children. For all mothers who have wept in sorrow and joy for their children. We give special thanks for our own mother. And today we pray a special blessing upon mothers and fathers who are dealing with the extra challenge of homeschooling often along with other family and workplace responsibilities. We ask, Lord, that your guiding hand would be upon the process of reopening schools in these weeks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our second flower is the forget-me-not, which perhaps reminds us of a loved one who is at a distance. Today, Lord, we pray for those with whom we cannot be physically present and whose company we miss. We pray particularly for loved ones who live in care homes, who for so long have been deprived of a simple hug. Lord, we give you thanks for the wonder of technology, which has kept many people connected through the pandemic. May its power be channeled for good in our society and may its dangers and temptations be curbed and resisted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our third flower is the purple hyacinth, a flower often associated with apologies and forgiveness. On this Mothering Sunday, we are mindful of all who have been affected by ill treatment in the mother and baby homes of previous generations. God of justice and healing, we pray for individuals who have been carrying hurt or scars for many years or who have been kept in the dark about their stories. We pray that as a society we might find healthy ways to face up to the failures of our past and to do all that we can to right the wrongs of old. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Next, we have another carnation, 
this time a two-toned carnation, sometimes regarded as a symbol of parting. In the last week, the very public partings within the royal family have dominated news headlines. Lord, we pray today for the Queen and all members of the royal family. We are conscious that what they endure in the public glare all too often mirrors the partings and divisions in our own families. Today, we make the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi our own. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Next, we see a daffodil, the flower which we will very soon see all around us, the flower which tells us more than any other that spring has sprung and which epitomises the new life of this time of year. Lord, we pray today for all new mothers and fathers and for all newborn babies. We pray too for all families who have an adopted child or children within them. We remember too all godparents and our calling within the church to live as the family of God. God our creator, we thank you for the gift of children entrusted to our care, to the care of their parents and given a place within the family of the church. May we be patient and understanding, ready to guide and to forgive, so that through our love, the children we know may come to know your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And our final flowers are two biblical flowers, the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley both used to describe the Lord in the Bible. Fairest Lord Jesus, Lord of all creation, Jesus of God and Mary the Son, you will I cherish, you will I honour, you are my soul's delight and crown. All fairest beauty, heavenly and earthly, Wondrously, Jesus, in you I see, none can be nearer, fairer or dearer, than you, my Saviour, are to me. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As God's children and heirs with Christ, we cry in the Spirit, Abba, Father. So with confidence, let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So we're going to sing together one last time this morning and our final hymn, My Heart is Filled with Thankfulness. Thank you. 
Praise God who loves us. Praise God who cares. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you in your homes and in your families on this Mothering Sunday and forevermore. Amen.